Now that our class server has been created, the next thing we're going to do is to be able to verify whether it has been created. So we're going to create a request on our localhost 5000. So we're going to write to click on this with control and then click. So this is going to open up our terminal. So we even see that we are getting some requests here. So when I head over to my Microsoft Edge, we now see that we do not have any routes attached to our app. So now we're going to create our routes that we are going to help us that are going to help us actually navigate to the different parts of our API. So we're going to create endpoints, but we're going to use a Flask extension known as Flask REST X that's going to make it easy for us to be able to create this endpoint as well as to create our swag AUI as we're going to see. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and install our Flask REST X. So I'm going to go to my terminal and stop my terminal with Ctrl and C. So I'll go ahead and install Flask REST X within our virtual environment. So I'll say pip install Flask REST X. So Flask REST X is a tool that allows us to build web APIs on top of Flask and it makes it easy for us to build these web APIs. It provides us with uh, serialization, it helps us with Swagger UI and so on. It makes the process of developing our REST API with Flask really easy, as you're going to see. So after installing this, then we shall just pip freeze it to our requirements.txt. So I'm going to add it to our requirements.txt file. And right after doing that, you can even verify whether it has been added. So when I go to our requirements.txt, we see that Flask REST X has been added. So now what you're going to do is to create the different parts of our application. So we're going to have the authentication part of our application where we shall sign up users, carry out our JWT authentication and so on. We're also going to have the orders part where we're going to basically have all our ordering logic. So what I'm going to do is to go to our API folder. So I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call this the orders folder. And then within the orders folder, I'm going to call it a package by introducing an init.py file in there. So I'm going to put an init.py file within here. And then the next folder I'm going to create is going to be our authentication folder. So I'll just call it all. And as well add an init.py file. So I'll call it init.py. So right after adding our init.py, I'm going to go ahead and create our views that are going to help us to access the different parts of our API. So since we're going to use Flash Crest X, it depends on things called resources. So resources are classes to which we write these different HTTP methods as we're going to see. So I'm going to create a views file within our auth folder. So I'm going to say views.py. And then within views.py, I'm going to be able to create our first resource. So I'm going to say from, actually I'm going to create a namespace that's going to work as blueprints. So if you haven't used blueprints before, blueprints enable us to have our project split into various modules so that we can be able to separate our logic into various modules. So now we've separated our logic into our authentication logic as well as our other logic. Now we can go ahead and use flash press X to create what are called namespaces. So namespaces help us to, dif to, to differentiate the various parts of our code as we have done here. So I'm going to create the authentication namespace as well as the others namespace. So I'm going to say from flask press X, I'm going to import namespace. So a namespace is similar to a blueprint, and I'm going to create our namespace by saying, so this is going to be the auth namespace, and this auth namespace is going to be an instance of our namespace class. So a namespace takes in the name of that namespace, so we call this the auth namespace, and then the description of what that namespace is going to do. So in this case, I'm going to pass in our description, so I'm going to say our description is going to be equal to, so I'll simply call this, so let me maximize this so that you guys can see. So this is going to be a namespace, so I'm going to just say a namespace for authentication, so I'll simply say this is going to be our authentication. And right after doing this, then the next thing I'm going to do is to create a resource, so I'm going to pass uh, be able to import our API from, I mean, our resource from class press X. So I'm going to put the resource class. And after I put in the resource class, and the next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and simply create a class that inherits from our resource. So I'll create a simple class, which I'm going to call hello authentication. So this class is going to inherit from resource. And 
this has to take in a route. So just like we, just like I mentioned blueprints, we can create routes of our namespaces. So I'm going to say add or namespace. Then we're going to decorate our entire class and then decorate it with the route that you want to use. So for example, in this case, we're going to say dot route, and then we're going to specify that our route is going to be on our root URL of our authentication. So after doing this, then I'm going to just simply come right here and then create our HTTP method, which is also going to be a method of this class. So I'm going to say that this is going to be a get method. This is going to take in self since it's going to run on any object of this class. So I'm going to say self and then uh, right now I'm just going to simply go ahead and return a simple dictionary. I'm going to have a message and that message is going to be, so this is going to be hello. So this is going to be hello all. So right after doing this, I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm going to do the same thing for our order. So I'll go within the orders folder. Let me first close this. So I'm going to go to our orders folder. And then create a visual py file. So I'll create a visual py file just in here. So let me correct this. And within this py, I'm going to go ahead and basically go ahead and do the same thing. So I'll save from flask rest x we are going to import our resource class as well as our namespace so right after doing this then the next thing is going to be to create our order namespace so i'm going to say that our order namespace so let me close this for now so this is going to be equal to an instance of the namespace class so the first thing we shall have here is going to be our name of the namespace, which I'm going to call orders. And then I'm going to add a description. And the description for this is going to be, I'm going to say description. And then I'm just going to say that this is a name space for orders. So I'll go ahead and create a resource class. So I'm going to say class. And this is going to be our hello orders. So I'll just say hello orders. And this is going to inherit from the namespace class. So I'll say, actually, it's going to inherit from our resource class. I'm going to say uh, it's going to be resource. And then right after doing that, then what I'll do is to go ahead and basically create our HTTP methods. But before I do that, then I'll have to first decorate this. So I'll say at order namespace dot route. And I'll specify that it's also going to be on the root URL of our order routes. Then I'll just come right in here and create a simple HTTP method that's going to take himself. And right after doing that, then I also return. In this case, I'm going to return a message. And this is going to be our hello orders. So right now we've created views in both our orders and our authentication. So the next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and basically uh, plug this into our application so that you can be able to access them. So I'm going to go to our API init.py file. And what I'll do is to first import these various views that we've created. So I'll come right here and I'll say, so since we've created our folder structure in that, we have uh, our authentication logic and our orders logic within packages of their own. Now we're going to use uh, modules. Uh, we're going to actually import these as modules. So what you shall say is from so in this case, we're going to say from dot orders dot views, meaning within the same directory, and then the views module, we are going to basically import our, so we're going to import the order namespace in this case, we shall do the same thing for our port, so I'll say from dot or dot views, and we need to go ahead and import our old namespace. So right after doing this, then we're going to be able to add this onto our main application. So Flask Rest X acts in a way that we create an API instance onto which we add our various namespaces and then we just add them onto our main Flask application. So what I'm going to do is to import our API class. So I'm going to come and say from Flask Rest X, I am going to go ahead and import our API class. So we need to create the instance of our API class within our application factory or our create a function in this case. So I'll just come right here and what I'll do is to say API is going to be equal to an instance of our API class. And then the API class takes in the first, the first 
argument as the app or the plus instance in this case. So it's going to be the app instance and then after doing this, then we're going to go ahead and register the namespaces that we've created in the various packages. So I'll just come right here and what I'll do is to say API dot add. So in this case, it's going to be namespace. And then I specify the namespace. In this case, it's going to be the order namespace. And then the next thing I'll do is to specify which part the URLs of that specific namespace are going to be. So in this case, I'm going to say path is going to be. So in this case, our other URLs will be on the root URL of our application. Then I'll do the same thing for the authentication. So I'll say API dot add namespace. So this is going to be add namespace. And then I specify that this is going to be our auth namespace. And then I'll specify the path as slash auth. So we're going to access all our authentication routes via the slash auth route. So I'll just say slash auth. So right after doing this, I'm going to go ahead and save. And I save. Check if our terminal is still running. So I'm going to run our terminal again with flask run. And now we don't have any errors, but we have our debug mode off. This means that each change you create is not going to reload our code. So we need to first export our plus debug to one, meaning that we're going to set our debug to true, or I'll actually do that within our phone.